This year there are 16,665 college students that have enrolled in Lakeland. 16,665 between Polk State, Florida Southern, and Southeastern University. I know mean, that's a lot of souls to win. That's a lot of people to impact for the kingdom, which just gets me uh, so excited. I want to welcome the college students. Um, we just we fasted for you. We prayed for you. Um, we we love college students. I just have a, a burning heart for you all, and uh, I just am so expecting about what the Lord's going to do on your campus this year. Um, me and my wife graduated from Southeastern and felt led to plant a church here in Lakeland that would just almost be an oasis, not Oasis Church, but would just be a place where people could go deeper. Um, like I said, I just knew a lot of students that went in, especially at Southeastern, so on fire for the Lord. We talked, by the time we graduated together, it was just spiritual deadness. It was just so dry. And uh, we just want to challenge you. We've got a service on Thursday nights. We call it the cry. We move the chairs out from the center here and just have an extended time of worship and ministry, the preaching of the word. And there's just a lot of weeping, just a lot of uh, lives being changed. You know, the church is full of touched people, not changed people. The church is full of touched people, not changed people. And I know a lot of us as college students, we're going to be church shopping. We're going to be going to all these different churches in Lakeland and checking out what's doing. But I just want to challenge you to get changed this year, not touched. We live in a, an emotional generation where we like the feelings and we like the presence, but we, do we really want transformation in our lives? I, for one, am, am, am tired of being touched. I want to be touched that leads to change. So we're going to ask that, that the Lord just come and change us this year. Um, I really felt like the Lord talk, uh, just came to me uh, this week and just wanted me to talk about walking in the spirit of prophecy. Can you say prophecy? Uh, now I know everybody wants to run. Uh, but I just wanted to share some testimonies about what God did um, in me and through me, especially at my time at Southeastern. Um, there are just a lot of things that God is doing. I've always said that God didn't write a book and then lose his voice. Amen? God didn't write a book and then lose his voice. Now, I believe in the soul of Scripture. I believe that the Bible is the word of God. But I still believe that God speaks today. Now, if any, anybody says something that they think is from the Lord and it contradicts Scripture, we're going to throw that out. Okay? You really have two, two schools of thought. You have, you have a, you know, denominations of churches that don't believe that God speaks today. So they kind of handle everything with the word of God, with teaching, with discipleship, which is great. But now on the other end of the pendulum or the, or the swing, you have a kind of a bunch of, I call it like the spook and natural. You have a bunch of people that are hanging from the chandeliers <laughs> doing stuff, just, just crazy stuff. And I really want to center us in what I call the radical middle. I think there's a radical middle that God has asked us to walk in. Not only being strong and moving in the power of the Holy Spirit, but also being strong in the Word of God. Yes. We should be just as passionate about the Word of God as we are about worship. I want to challenge you to bring your Bible, bring your iPhone. We're living in a generation that does not know the Word of God. And because we don't know the Word of God, we don't know how to make war on the enemy. So we become a slave to the enemy. So we really need to be rooted and grounded in the word. Uh, Chuck Colson always said, sermon nets produce Christian nets. If you haven't noticed yet, we're not here to do three songs in a 20-minute message. We are here to go deep. We have designed this entire semester for as much of the Holy Spirit as you want, you are going to get. I can guarantee you that, that over the next six months, there is no one that is going to leave this place that said that could say, I was not given an opportunity to go deeper. We've just got to get totally tired of being ankle deep and say, Lord, I want you to baptize me. I'm talking a total water immersion. And part of that process is surrounding yourself with other believers. No, not sleeping in every Sunday. <clears throat> I've been there. Surrounding yourself with people that will challenge you to go deeper. So we're going to talk about prophecy this morning. Part of my growth curve was learning that my relationship with the Holy Spirit was more than a monologue. It was supposed to be a dialogue. I would describe most of my um, teenage life and early college life as when I sin, 
I would stop talking to God or think that He would stop talking to me because He needed time to cool off. I would describe probably the first 18 years of my life as love the Lord, love to be around people, but when I sinned or when I messed up, God needed time to cool off, so I didn't even want to hear Him, and I knew that He didn't want to talk to me. How many of that's a lie? Okay. So many of us get in this relationship where it's it's awesome if, if we believe that God you know speaks, but it's even a greater understanding if He can use us to speak to other people. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 12, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I was reading the paper this week, and um, I was delighted to see that there is a, um, a psychic and spiritual clinic that is opening up in Winter Haven in Lakeland. They do hypnotherapy, uh, spiritual readings. She's a life coach. It's part of a growing trend of alternative healing methods in Winter Haven and Lakeland. My intuition definitely does allow me to be more effective. I don't have to spend hours and hours with somebody, Cook says. You don't want to read this, but this got me real fired up this week. How many people know that, that people are getting tired of being told about God? People are longing for a show-and-tell gospel. People are longing to experience the truth. When I, I work with people that, that don't believe in prophecy, that God can speak to me about their life, the first thing that if you know me, I say, well, let me pray for you and you tell me if God speaks to me. It's always my, my first reaction. I'm that confident that God wants to encounter people. So I have spent most of my life these last maybe seven or eight years looking for opportunities, looking to create a time and a, and a, a place and a space where the Holy Spirit could break it and just say, hey, that's the Lord. I was at the gym yesterday, Saturday morning, and there's a guy, a trainer, that walked up to me, and he said, hey, are you Jeremiah? Never seen this guy in my life before. And I said, yeah, that's me. He said, yeah, I saw your face on a poster, and we have... The big, the Corey Asbury Conference, we have posters in Lakeland and different places that has my face on it. So I was thinking, this is how this guy knows me. And out of the blue, he just says, yeah, I really have a hard time with that prophecy thing. It's out of the blue. And I just played stupid for a while. <laughs> and he's telling me about this and that and how he grew up and there's no way and all this different stuff. And I said, that's interesting. And I said, well, it's kind of like this to me. It's kind of like someone comes up to you and starts telling you about your life. So I start telling this kid about his life, how his parents divorced when he was young, how he has a broken heart. And I said, then the Lord starts giving you some wisdom and, and some understanding about your future. And I started telling this kid what he liked to do. And I said, your wife's pregnant. And all these different stuff. And his eyes got from this big to like this big. And I said, that's kind of how prophecy works. <laughs> That's the difference between being told about Jesus and experiencing Jesus. He said, what is it? I just feel fire on me. He said, I, I, I can't explain it. I said, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. There's so much. Listen to me. If, if, if you're new here, there's so much more than what we're currently experiencing. I mean, I, I know some people can't relate, but guys, I am. I, my dad passed through a church. I grew up in church. I'm so tired of preaching to people blue in the face. Hey, we're going to preach the gospel, but we're also going to demonstrate it. We, we took a trip out to Bethel just a few weeks ago with Bill Johnson and something that's impacted my life, and it was the second time I've gone out there. And I just found myself sitting in this church where people read the books, and I just feel like the Lord said to me, what are you doing here? Why are you chasing what I've already given you? So we go out in the hall and there was this lady that had broken her foot in two places. I told this to the church a couple of weeks ago. Had broken her foot in two places and had a boot on up to her knee, walking in crutches. And we just laid hands on that foot and said, Lord, we just ask that you reveal your goodness, your love to this woman. And we're going to believe that she's going to walk. Well, wouldn't you know, within probably 20 minutes, she was walking completely healed. 
this was such an outstanding miracle at Bethel that we found ourselves up in their film room filming this lady, interviewing her so that they could document this miraculous healing to the world. And she was scheduled for surgery. This was on a Saturday. I said, I want you to send me the x-ray on, on Tuesday when you have it. So this lady shows me the x-ray, and she says, it's crazy. So the doctor was blown away that my bones and my feet actually grew back together. I mean, I that's God. I might get tired of this, but I just felt like God told me to tell like 20 stories this morning. You know, sometimes, sometimes our faith needs to be elevated. Sometimes we limit what can be known as truth by what we've experienced. And how many of you know, or, or we can be humble enough to admit, a lot of us are missing out on a lot of things. I mean, seriously, there are a lot of people that just say, I, Bill Johnson has always said, people criticize what they don't understand. People criticize, they, we get skeptical. I, guys, I went to Southeastern, I know the whole intellectual thing, and how could we reason? And I was talking to a professor this week, and he was telling me that he believed that God could speak to him about his life, but he's not really quite sure if God can use him to speak to other people's life. And I was just trying to grasp that concept. Okay, you believe in a relationship with the Holy Spirit where he speaks to you, but you're having a hard time believing that he can speak to you about other people's life, other people's lives. I really have always said, what if someone's breakthrough what if their destiny is lying on your ability to be open to listen to the Holy Spirit? It's about being consciously aware of our situations. We are at Buffalo Wild Wings last night, hanging out with a few guys from the church and just digging on some Parmesan garlic wings. I love that. And just watching some football. And there's a, a, our waiter. That just a guy, his name was like Matt S. or whatever. I was just like, Lord, what's up with this guy? Lord just started talking about his life, and I just said, hey, man, he, you know, came up to the table, and I said, man, I just really feel like the Lord is going to, you're going to sign a contract in your life, you're a gifted man, kind of a jack of all trades, and he was like, okay, that's cool, and you could tell, like, he was like, okay, this is going to get real weird, and he tried to pull away, and I said, well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> These guys can verify their story, and then I just, I just started talking, I said, you know, it's okay to be angry. I said, there's been a relationship close to your life where it just slipped out of your hands. And it's okay that you still have pain. And this guy, you can tell he was about to cry. And he said, whoa, that's a little too close. And then just took off. <laughs> right when we paid our bill to leave, he kind of pulled me to the side and said, man, I'm, I'm Catholic. <laughs> he, said, he said, nobody comes at me like that. <laughs> He said, I don't even have a personal relationship. He said, I don't even believe in this stuff. And I said, yeah, well, what was that? He said, I've ever met you before? No. Do I know anything? No. I said, well, that's just a seed to let you know that the Lord loves you. Everywhere that we go, there's a walking encounter. Any, any, your campus, your workplace, God is longing for us to open up our ears and our eyes and say, Lord, would you like to speak to this person? To me, it's about walking in blessing and encouragement. I mean, there's not a day when someone does not need to be encouraged. I'm going to talk about a couple points today about what blessing and encouragement can do in our lives. But if you look at the text in 1 Corinthians 12, I'm just going to give you a little background if you're not familiar with prophecy so you don't think I'm a heretic. And um, we're going to start reading in verse 7. We're just going to go scripture today. Imagine that. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing or discernment between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. Most of us, if we come from a, a Pentecostal, Assembly of God, Charismatic, vineyard, whatever it might be, we're kind of familiar with this gifts that are listed 
in 1 Corinthians 12 that make up the DNA of what prophecy is. So the first one I want to point out to you is the message of wisdom. A word of wisdom is a, a, the, part of the DNA makeup. There's four. If you keep reading, to another, the message of knowledge, a word of knowledge. Number two, if you keep on reading and, and you move down, it, it says, to another prophecy, that's three. And then the final one is discernment or distinguishing between spirits. When someone says you're prophetic or, or prophecy, whatever, what they're really talking about is there are four components or DNA of prophecy. There's words of knowledge, words of wisdom, discerning of spirits, and then actually prophecy itself, which is a predicting of the future. Now, most churches believe that the prophet no longer exists and the pastor has become the prophet. I don't believe that at all. I believe that there are, there are two separate ministries that God has given the church. So there's, there's a gift of, of prophecy. What is a word of knowledge? A word of knowledge is an event, a date, um, a detail about someone's life that you could not know unless the Spirit of God spoke to you. It's a detail, an event, a time, something detail-oriented about that person's life that you could not have known unless the Spirit of God revealed it to you. Okay? I have a prophetic school here in the city of the church that called the Samuel Company where I train and teach people how to prophesy and what it is. We're meeting on Tuesday nights starting September 4th at 6. If any of this interests you or you know someone, I'm really going to encourage you. I, we have literally taken people that didn't even believe in it that are now laying hands, prophesying, seeing miraculous signs and wonders. It can happen. Words of knowledge. I want to share just a couple stories about when I went to Southeastern and how the Lord used me in words of knowledge. My sophomore year at Southeastern, there was a birthday party at the Red Lobster on the north side of town. It's down there by Buffalo Wild Wings. And I was sitting at this birthday party, and there was a waiter, a big guy, maybe 6'4", long hair, looked super rough, that was walking by. And the Lord just, I call it, he highlighted this guy to me. There was just something different about this guy that stuck out to me. And I just began to pray and say, Lord, what is it about this guy? And the Lord just showed me that he had a broken relationship between his parents. They were at odds with one another, and he also needed to forgive his sister. That was something that God spoke to me. Never seen this guy before in my life, ever. Don't even know him. That was something that God spoke to me. So I said, okay, Lord, I'm sitting there with this information, a word of knowledge about this guy's life. And, and trust me, and you guys, and the more I tell stories, the more you'll think I'm like some type of Superman. I'm really not. But I'm just like you sitting there thinking like, how is this supposed to work? How do you find a not awkward moment to tell this guy that we've never met before something about his life? And it wasn't even about the brokenness. It was about God was promising to heal these relationships. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. So I, this guy's at the cash register. Big guy, looks super rough. And I said, hey, my name's Jeremiah. And he just kind of brushed me off and says, so what? Yeah, okay. I'm like, well, I was sitting over there and, um, you know, sometimes I get real creative. So I went with the higher power. I said, um, there's this higher power in the universe and he started talking to me about your life and um, one of the things that he showed me was that there's some distance between your parents right now, some bitterness, some disagreement. And I said, you're also away from your sister and the Lord is promising to restore relationship. And I'm telling you, within a matter of like three seconds, this guy starts weeping. This, this big, rough looking guy is just bawling his eyes out. And he is like shaking. I mean, it was like this powerful encounter at a Red Lobster at somebody's birthday party when I was a sophomore at Southeastern. Come on. And he's just shaking. And he said, let, let me give you my phone number. I, I want to know more. I didn't, like, that's all I had time. He had to get to his table. So the guy calls me that night at like 1 in the morning. He's still freaking out. He's like, how did you know that? He's like, what, what was that? You know, he's like, I'm, I'm just trembling. I said, meet me at Palace Pizza in downtown Lakeland tomorrow, and I'll tell you more about it. So I went to the Palace Pizza in downtown Lakeland, and I talked with this guy. 
And there was some deliverance that he needed, you know, just some real ministry. And I prophesied to him more about his life. And after an hour, we got down on our knees together. We gave, we gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Effective ministry or just praying general prayers over people. See, that's the thing. If you, if you love ministry, you love people, and someone comes up to you and says, I need prayer, you can just say, well, Lord, pray that you touch them and, you know, heal them and amen. Or you could say, Holy Spirit, is there anything that you want to show me about this person's life that can not only let them know that you love them, but they can really begin to experience you? Which one do you want? I was working out at the gym last week. The Lord uses me in the gym. I, I used to listen to bad music when I went to the gym growing up, disturbed and all that stuff. It wasn't good. And since I the Lord really got a hold of me, I listened to like the most lovey dovey sermons ever. So I'm like up under this heavy weight and they're like talking about resting in God and it's just like it's it's a battle. But I really found a lot of times when I listen to that type of music, the Lord just opens up the weight room just to talk to people. And it's awkward as well because guys are like running and up under this weight and I'm about to drop a Holy Spirit bomb on <laughs> So I noticed this guy across the way, he's up under the bench and he is drunk. He's an older guy, probably thinks he's 20 and he's like 60. And, and I just looked at this guy and the Lord just immediately gave me a picture of his shoulders and his wrists that were just torn to shreds. I walked up to this guy and said, hey, sir, have you ever had any injuries in your shoulders and wrists? And he said, yeah, I've torn both my rotator cuffs and I've cracked both my wrists. And he, he didn't really even think much about it. He just, I was like, yeah. And I, I started talking to him, just, just loving on him. Just loving on this guy. Just like, man, the Lord loves you. He wants to heal you. All this different stuff. And then I went deeper. Because normally I try to keep it, you know, like where they won't run. And then I, you know, I'm going to go for the kill. <laughs> I started talking to this guy about his divorce and some things that happened. And he was just, this guy, by the time that the Holy Spirit was done with him, was so undone, he had nothing to say. I just ended up walking away because it was just like, you know, and their response is, well, I'm Baptist. Well, I'm Methodist. Well, I, I don't care what denomination you are. It doesn't matter. God is not afraid of denominational barriers. He just wants to say, hey, I can, can, do you want to be used? And we were in the we were in the sauna one day. I love telling the story. Of all people, a place is a sauna. It was like 120 degrees in there. And, and, and I was just in there, and there's this little guy that was in there, and he just is, you could just tell he's so depressed, so bound up. And I said, Lord, what's up with this guy? I'm telling you, I mean, when you start getting this stuff, you're asking God about every single person. Lord, what's up? What what is bound this guy up? The Lord just started showing me he's suicidal. His parents just split up, all this different stuff. And I was just like, Lord, how can I love this guy? So I just struck up a conversation with him. Talked to this guy probably for 20 minutes. I was literally about to pass out. I was like working out the salvation of fear and trembling. And I was just like getting dizzy and was just trying to just love on this guy for about 20 minutes. And, and on my way out, I just said, hey, man, I just really want you to know that the Lord loves you. That he knows your brokenness. He knows the pain that you're experiencing. I'm telling you, this guy starts bawling his eyes out in a sauna of 120 degrees and just has an encounter with the Lord. This is not something special. This is something that God wants to use each and every one of you. So you've got words of knowledge. That's part of the prophetic. You've got words of wisdom. Can you say wisdom? Wisdom. When I was at Southeastern my junior year, there was a BP gas station near the school. And every time I drove by it, I just got like this burden, like, Lord, what is it about this gas station? So I started pulling over and praying and saying, what, what's going on here? And the Lord told me that this gas station was about to be shut down, but that another gas station was become going to become available for this woman that owned the gas station. And I told her, I said, listen, and again, I have never met this lady in my life. I'm battling fear, and she's going to think I'm crazy and whatever. And I walked into this gas station, and I just said, ma'am, 
I really sense right now that things are tight, finances are tight. This thing's about to go under, but God is telling you that another gas station is going to become available for you to run, and you need to take it. Well, this lady thought I was crazy. I mean, just completely crazy. Within two weeks, that gas station shut down, completely shut down. I was at the grocery store, and I met this lady. She came up to me and said, you were totally right. She said, not a day since you left, there's another person that came in that I knew that offered me a gas, a gas station. And I told her, there's no, there's no way I'm, I'm good where I'm at. Within a, a week, I got a notice that I was shut down. That's a word of wisdom. That's something about the direction of someone's life and business that I could have n never known. I, I don't, didn't even know um, this lady. One of the favorite stories I like to tell is I go up to a conference every year called the Voice of the Prophets Conference. And this is a conference up in Mechanicsburg with Randy Clark. And there are people that gather from all over, all over that are just looking to hear from the Lord and be prophesied over whatever that looks like. Well, the day before I went to this conference, I had a dream. And if you know me, I dream about every night. I had a, I had a dream last night that I was on Dr. Rutland's deathbed. And I was writing his will with him about the plans for Southeastern that he had that never got accomplished. Hey, I have no idea what that means. Sorry, I have no idea. I just have all these crazy dreams. But I had, a, I had a dream that this guy, I met a guy in my dream, and his name was Steve Allen. He was a business guy. And this guy owned a really nice company, and they were going under just completely under, and the Lord told me, he said, tell this guy that there's about to be in the next season incredible increase that's going to come to this business. I wake up, and I'm like, I don't even know a Steve Allen. I have never even heard of Steve Allen. I don't recognize him in the dream. Like, a lot of times I'm like, Lord, what are you doing to me? I'm like, just leave me alone. All this stuff. So I'm like, okay, Lord, I'll write this down. If I meet some dude named Steve Allen, I'll, I'll do it. I go up to this conference. The last day of this conference, I'm sitting in this chair, and I kid you not, a guy with a name tag that matches the description, Steve Allen, sits down right next to me. And I still get spooked about this stuff. I'm like, whoa. I just like the fear of the Lord came on me, the weight of this responsibility. I'm fighting myself like, oh boy, here we go. And I turn to this guy. I didn't even tell him about the dream. I was just like, okay. I was like, man, I have a word for you. I said, man, there, there's some financial stress going on right now. I said, don't sell your business. Don't give up on it. I said, the Lord's about to bring an incredible increase to you. And he just looked at me. He said, thanks. <laughs> so I walked off. Never, ever knowing what happened to that. Never. I went this past year. And guess who I met? Steve Allen, with the cheesiest smile on his face you've ever seen he just, he's like, he's like floating. He comes up to me. He says, do you remember that word you gave me, like, was it four years ago? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, man, when you told me that, he said, I had just let go of 16 friends that worked for my company that I've, I've known for years. He said, when you gave me that word, I was ready to turn it in. Just, I was wanting to do something else. But he said, every morning that I got up, your words of encouragement that God was going to bring increase. I've held on to that for four years. And he said, just yesterday, I have not only rehired all those 16 guys, but you ready? I've hired 16 more. A word of wisdom. There's a scripture, Paul, when he's, they're on the ship and they're about, they're about to crash and they said we need to let down the lifeboats and Paul says, if you let them down, we're all going to die, stay on the ship. I would consider that a word of wisdom. Just hang with me here. Discernment of spirits. There's a lot of different things. I've, I've talked about how I was in, living in Bower Hall one night, just studying the book of Jeremiah. We got the uh, Bower RD here, Emory. Praise God for him. Yeah, that's a crazy call. And I was just at my desk one night. It was about midnight. And I just said to the Lord, you know, Lord, I love you. You know, use me. I want to I touch people's lives. And he said, go to Lake Hollingsworth. Go to Lake Hollingsworth. I have an encounter for you on the dock. So I go out there. It's like 12.01. I'm sitting out there. It was one of those eerie nights where no one was on Lake Hollingsworth. And there's always someone on Lake Hollingsworth. 
And I'm sitting there, and I this is a true story. God strike me down in this time. I have my Bible open to Hebrews 4, and I'm sitting there, and I read, the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two double-edged sword. It goes on and on, and you can finish it. And a woman out of nowhere sits right down next to me, scared, scared me to death. Whoa. Turn over. And there was like no white in her eyes. Completely pitch black. She is high. She's drunk. She's slurring her speech. And it was just like, she was about to say something, and I just laid my hands in the name of Jesus. She just starts convulsing. And I said, you come out of her right now, Satan. She bent over that dock and probably threw up for 20 minutes straight. I mean, black stuff. I mean, all this different stuff. Just totally got delivered and set free. And I, I really believe that even, even, even kind of drugs, even drunk, there was a guy at Southeastern, like my junior year, that probably snorted like three lines of cocaine. Something crazy. I mean, this guy was so out of his mind. We took him over to Aventura, laid hands on this guy, and said, In the name of Jesus, be still. He just straight line. I mean, his eyes were so red they became clear. There's more than what you're experiencing. There's more than just Jesus' name. I hope God he helps you. God wants to increase the supernatural in your life. He, the Holy Spirit, wants to teach us how to ask questions. I mean, when you, it, this stuff, like, I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's addicting, but when you really begin to see people encounter a living God, how is it that we serve a living God and are so powerless? I mean, I think that every Bible college and seminary, every person that wants to get into ministry needs to be trained and equipped in how to move in the supernatural. Every business person should have an ear to the Spirit, should say, Lord, use me. Lord, give me wisdom. I'm about to make a major financial whatever. We need to hear the Lord on that. I talked to a guy who bought a, a, bought a business, and he said, well, do you think that God's going to bless my business? I said, well, did you ask him first? He says to me, well, why would I do that? I'm like, oh, probably not. Within one month, that thing went so far under, he lost like, I think it was $30,000 in a month. But we've, we've, I want you to just put that in your vocabulary. Before I make decisions, before I minister, Holy Spirit, is there anything that you want to speak to me? We find it in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 31, it says, You can all prophesy. There's not one person that's a believer in Jesus Christ that at one time or another in their life can't be used to give someone a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, discern the spirits, even the prophetic, predicting the future. Now that's going to fall more in the lines of a prophet. There's a, just because you prophesy doesn't make you a prophet. That's a ministry in itself. That's different. But each and every believer is capable of moving in some form of that. I just want to go over just a couple points. And my first point is this. Blessing and encouragement is the Father's desire for His church. When we gather together, God wants us to be actively, even during worship, when you're grabbing a donut, when you're listening to the Word, whatever that you're doing, say, Lord, how can I encourage someone? The Lord is bringing the church up out of this receiving mentality when we come to our services, and He's bringing us into this whole thing of, Lord, how can I give this morning? See, that's what spending time in the secret place with the Lord every day will do. You will stop making services about receiving because you've already received during the week. And you will come with a heart full to pour out. See, the reason why you don't see the Spirit of God really moving in the American church is because everybody is showing up saying, God. And what God wants is a church that is ministering to Him. It says that Samuel was found ministering to the Lord. The Lord is looking for bodies and groups of people that will be found ministering to Him, not saying, oh God, minister to me. Now there are, there are times, there are seasons where we're going to be dry, when we're weary and we need to touch from the Lord. But I'm telling you, atmospheres, entire churches would shift if there was a mentality of when people came, they were locked and loaded, ready to bless and encourage someone. 
flip over your page, 1 Corinthians 14. Follow. Now, I really believe that God wants to give some of us a strong conviction about this. This morning is not about some guy telling you a bunch of crazy stories and you saying, wow, good for him. It's about all of us going back and reading God's Word, 1 Corinthians 14.1, and it literally says, follow the way of love, and then the literal translation is not eagerly desired. It is zealously lust after the spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. If you are in here this morning and saying, I don't have any idea what this guy's talking about, I've never seen a healing, that's what you need to zealously lust after, doing that. That is a biblical command. That is not some dude telling you to do this. That is God's word for your life. I want to use you, especially prophecy. So you have not only go after the spiritual gifts, but above all of them, go after prophecy. Cry out and ask the Lord for it. Verse 2, for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself but he who prophesies edifies the church. So there are three words here. Edify, exhort, and consult. I know it says to strengthen, encourage, and comfort, but the literal words in the Greek are edify, exhort, and comfort. When we prophesy to one another, we need to make it about encouraging and exhorting and bringing comfort to other people. Many, re many of the reasons why people are scared of the gift of prophecy operating is they think that it's about exposing someone's sin in a public setting, making them feel full of shame and guilt and condemnation. How many of you know that's not the Father's heart? That is not what He has called us to do. He has called us to encourage. When we're asking the Lord for a word of knowledge, wisdom, discernment, a prophecy, we're saying, Lord, how can I encourage this person? Notice the very first thing. It says, follow the way of love. Lord, because you love this person, I'm asking that you would speak to them. That's first and foremost. Because why does God want to use me to prophesy to people? Ready? It's real simple. Because he loves them. God is in the business of revealing love to people far beyond Jesus loves you. That's great, but there's more. That's great, but there's more. So blessing and encouragement is the Father's desire for the church. Number two, blessing and encouragement empowers people. You're taking notes. Blessing and encouragement empowers people. I know we're running out of time. You don't have to go there. I'll just summarize it. Deuteronomy 3. 21 through 29. So Moses comes to the end of his days, and the Lord says, you're not going to the promised land. But go up on this mountain and look over, and you can see it. And then I want you to commission and encourage Joshua. I want you to empower him. And here's the cool thing. The encouragement and empowerment that Moses gave Joshua was based off of what Moses had seen of the future. The encouragement and commissioning, the empowerment that Moses gave Joshua to go into the promised land was based off of what the Lord allowed Moses to see. You can empower people around you by asking the Lord, Lord, show me something about their life that would empower them. There are so many people because the prophetic is about giving sight to people. It's about saying, I see this about your life. Now here it is. How many of us, so many of us, we have accepted walking around blind in the church. Well, I guess God, you know, He doesn't care about me. He doesn't. God is about awakening dreams and hearts. God is about saying, this is what you're called to. I don't know how many people I have prophesied over where the Lord revealed a secret of their heart that un undid them. They didn't even know it was there. But the Lord planted a seed inside of their heart. Number three, blessing and encouragement, my favorite one, reveals heaven's perspective of our lives. Blessing and encouragement reveals heaven's perspective of our lives. Judges 6, 17 
7 through 19. Does anybody remember Gideon? That big wind. In, in Gideon's eyes, he was no good. He was hiding in a wine press. The, the most unlikely of people to be used by the Lord. And what does the angel come and say to him? Gideon, I am with you, mighty warrior. How many of you know that there was a clash between how Gideon viewed himself and how heaven viewed him? There are some of you in here this morning that are not fulfilling the call of God on your life because your perception of your life is radically different than the Father's perspective of your life. And someone is going to walk up to you, maybe even this morning, and say, this is heaven's perspective of your life. Now walk in it. Last point, my, one of my favorites too. Blessing and encouragement, you ready, stirs up anointing. Blessing and encouragement stirs up anointing. 1 Kings 19, 9 through 8. I know this is a lot, but I've always said, here you don't have to join a home group to get fed. It's just not, not who I am, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't believe in, in watering everything down in our main services and telling people if they want to go deeper and join a home group. I'm not bashing home groups. I'm, I think that they're great. But when you sacrifice what God wants to do for the majority, for a few people, you're not raising up disciples. I'm giving you guys scripture and things so that you can take this and just digest it this week. Just, just divulge it. Blessing and encouragement stirs up anointing. Here is, here is Elijah on top of Mount Carmel. He calls down the fire of God. He slays the prophets of Baal and Asherah. In the next moment, he is crying out to God in, in the valley saying, God, kill me. I'm done. You have like the highest mountaintop experience of someone's life, and then you have the lowly of the low. And little Elijah goes up to God and says, God, all this stuff is happening. And he says three times, what are you doing here, Elijah? How'd you like to like just feel so far and sorry for yourself and need a word from God? And he says, what are you doing? And basically God's word to Elijah is take a flask of oil and go anoint people. I've got stuff for you to do. I believe that there's someone even in this room this morning that is feeling so sorry for yourself and your situation. And God is saying it's time to move on. There are things that I've called you to do. Blessing and encouragement stirs up anointing. We, you can run, run across someone's path today or next week that is so discouraged, that is so nearsighted, and the Lord can say, I want you to stir up anointing in their life by blessing and encouraging them. Proverbs 11.25 says, He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Proverbs 16.24 Pleasant words bring healing to the bones. He who refreshes others himself will be refreshed. What I felt like the Lord told me to do this morning is just prophesy to some people in here. And again, it's, it's not about shaming you. I'm not going to tell you your sins. I'm just going to encourage you and build you up and bless you. That's my goal. My goal for, for this morning is that we would pursue love as a body and just leave her saying, wow, the Father loves me. The Father knows my heart. The Father knows my longings. He knows where I want to be. And as I move in the prophetic, you have a couple minutes, I just want to pray corporately that God would increase the gift of prophecy in your life. If you're like, I, guys, I've met people that are absolutely desperate for this. And most of the time, that's because they've been doing ministry all their life, and they want more. They're so tired of the little to no results that they've had. And I believe, and again, we're all about preaching the gospel. Signs and wonders is not a, a substitute for preaching truth. The whole thing is that we preach the gospel, and then we demonstrate it. We share Jesus with people, and they say, here's an encounter for you. Does that make sense? Just bow your heads with me. I'm just going to pray that the Father will just stir up the prophetic in this room. Just encourage us. Father, I thank you for every individual that's here. 
Father, thank you for sending them. Lord, you woke us up this morning. Even for someone that doesn't even know what they're doing here, this stuff is weird. Lord, I just pray that you would let them know they're here for a reason. says that I see your humility, my son. I see the longing of your heart to love people. I see your longing to work with the broken, those that deal with shame, secret sins. The Lord says I'm going to use you like a bridge. And you will be a bridge in people's life. You will connect them with my spirit. There's coming a day where I'm even going to move you to the streets. You will work amongst the homeless and the needy. You will love them. You will be loved to my people. So clothe yourself with love this day. Clothe yourself with encouragement this day. Father says that I know the plans that I have for you, my son. I know the pain that you have experienced. I know the joy that you will one day walk in. If I have called you to be a man of joy, you will walk people through their suffering and through their pain, just as I have walked with you through your suffering and your pain. Do not forget what I promised a strong generational heritage that's running through your blood. The Lord just says that I will remember all the words that I promise. There's even like a glue that's coming to your family, a reconciliation. Even those that are scattered, the Lord is going to bring back together. You are a burden bearer. And the Lord says, even this year, do not let the burdens that you are not supposed to carry affect your life, my son. Teach you how to carry some burdens, but I will not crush you. I have not called you here, even in this place, to crush you. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Wide is the path, and narrow is the gate, my son. I called you to be a smuggler of souls. There are many in this hour that abuse my grace. There are many that think they know me, but they do not know me. And I am sending you, my son, to a people that think they know me, but they do not know me. Wide is the gate. Wide is the path. Narrow is the gate. You will smuggle them to the gate. I'm calling you to deep darkness. I will call you even to the deliverance ministry when you're 25, 27 years old. I'll begin to reveal to you the dark, dark secrets of the enemy. But I'll also reveal and what will come with it is a deep revelation of light. You will have a ministry of light to my people. Lord, 
Lord says that I've called you to be a shepherd of many. I've given you a true pastoral heart. But you also know the pain and the burnout that comes with that. The Lord says, I want you to know that it's not about a race. It's about the journey, my son. And I'm taking it with you one day at a time. Do not become overwhelmed. Even by all this that's been talked about, for in time I will release it to you. Do not consider yourself as one that will just follow. But even now you must begin to recognize that you will lead many. But first you have to follow before you can truly lead. In these days I will surround you with other shepherds, other men and women that shepherd my people well. There's a healthiness and a wholeness. A healthiness and a wholeness to your ministry that I will give you. And many people will come and drink clean water. They will graze upon fresh grass, my son. Just wait for me. Wait for me. Wait for me. You guys can see it. Is there anybody here that um, is, has a heart for homeless ministry? Will you stand up? And if, if you have a heart for homeless ministry, just a word of knowledge of the Lord gave, gave me homeless ministry. Or maybe God just called you homeless ministry. I don't know. You guys just lift your hands to the Lord. I am releasing messengers of good news in the earth. You will carry my good news to the streets. But know that there are many that go to the streets whose words are lacking in hope, <coughs> whose hands are lacking in action, whose finances still remain in the bank Though I've asked them to give. I'm challenging you this day to go further, to not preach good news, but to be good news. I even believe that there's like a, even overseas missions is something that you're, you either have done or will do. And it's going to be part of the process in your life. The Lord is even sending you to other places and allowing you to see people that really have a heart for people. It's, it's just not, the Lord says that it's, it's not a job. This is a true calling. It's a true burden that, that will really bear within you. In the, the pink and the turquoise with your glasses, your red glasses. The Lord even says to beware of the fringe, my son. Beware of those that just hang out in this season. Beware of the apathetic and the complacent. For know that I've called you to be a man that will set others on fire. But first, you yourself must become fire. There's a deep cleansing that's coming to your spirit, man. There's a further consecration that I will ask you to make. Be ready. For your time comes, your appointed time comes even sooner than you realize or you could imagine. In Jesus' name, you guys can be seen. Is there a, a Caleb or a Robert that is here? Okay. Does anybody know a Caleb or a Robert? Okay. If they're a burden, you just stand up. This, this could be for them too. If you know a Caleb or a Robert, somebody that it's just a burden to you. I just, I really, when the Lord spoke this word, um, I just really got um, so much, um, so much, um, I mean, how can I describe it? Um, just like a, an inner awakening, um, it could have to do with salvation, uh, deliverance, just a radical um, transformation that God wants to bring. And I also got a scripture, um, with humility comes wisdom. And I really believe even for these Caleb's and Roberts that there's a humility, a process of humility that's going to be released. And then a deep found wisdom that these will be men of deep wisdom. So 
Father, we just lift up the Caleb's and the Roberts to you. Father, we thank you that you know their situation even now. Lord, and whether it's for salvation and deliverance, Lord, a tearing down of strongholds. Father, whether it's for the process of humility that you're releasing, thank you for even these people standing, that you're giving them insight in how to deal with Caleb's and Roberts. Lord, we do pray for the fruit of wisdom, Lord, to be deep in their life. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Will you three stand up right there? Yeah. Don't get scared. I'm just gonna just gonna encourage you. That's it. <laughs> I had people at Southeastern that was afraid of me. <laughs> um, in, the, in the orange there, there's just a, a very um, a very tender and compassionate heart that you have, um, even for people. It could even be for animals. And um, I just really believe that God um, just is, is drawing you into a season of, of tenderness and is really going to speak to your heart. And I think that there's a, a further captivating of your gaze, a, a real fascination. And I just really believe that in your future, one of the things that God is going to ask of you is just to sit at his feet. And he is really desiring to speak to you. And there are questions that you have about some things that have happened that just don't make sense. And I believe that God is going to make sense that He is even the answer to your dilemma. And I just believe that you're at a crossroads, an intersection in your life. And the Lord is almost like pulling you away from what's familiar. And He's going to lead you to a vulnerable place. And it's going to be scary. It's, it's going to be... But the Lord is really promising, daughter, that He will withhold you he has not brought you this far to, to, to um, make you stumble or fall. So, Father, we just pray that your love, Lord, would just surround, Lord, this daughter. Lord, that she would be empowered, Lord, that even this day she knows that you know intimate details about her heart. Okay, jacket. <laughs> All right, Lord, I just thank you for your daughter. Lord, I thank you, Father, for the joy and breakthrough, Lord, that you're going to place upon her. Lord, her heart is so hungry for what's real. Lord, she is desiring the more of you. Lord, and I just pray that you would anoint her and increase her giftings even now. Father, that she will not only share your word in her lifetime, Lord, but she will demonstrate your kingdom. The Lord says you will become a student of the supernatural, and then in your lifetime you will be a teacher of the supernatural. Just as I will impart giftings inside of you, know that one day you will impart giftings and you will awaken giftings. There are even those on your campus that have a hard heart toward me, even those that do not believe that I speak today, but I will use you in mighty and powerful ways. I see a spirit of might that is going to come upon you, and it's literally breaking chains off of you right now. There's expectations over your life, and the Lord is going to rip down disappointment that you are free. The Lord says that you are free this day. You do not have to live up to the expectations of those around you, but I've called you to walk a different path. It's even an unfamiliar path than those around you. There's even some type of family dynamic here, and the Lord is just going to even confirm them. I just really believe the Lord is saying, if you walk in my ways, and I think it's again that process of God doing it in you, and you teaching even those that you love, that it's real and it really is from the Lord. So Lord, we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Uh, number three, um, I just even feel like it's important for you to know that, that uh, you're not last. And I just speak that over you, that the Lord has not forgotten about you. And um, you are really near and dear to his heart right now. And there are even doors uh, that are being opened supernaturally. Um, there's a dark night of the soul, even some depression and anxiety that the Lord is just healing right now. And uh, the Lord says, I want to be your joy. You will literally sing and dance before him. There's a, a real spirit of deliverance that's upon you. And the Lord even now says, you die. it's okay. It's okay to be upset, but know that that worship and praise and dance is going to be your avenue. And the Lord says, do not be a prisoner of your emotions. 
Don't be a prisoner of your emotions. Let me channel um, the love that I place inside of you for my glory. You're going to be a kingdom shaker. You're going to be an atmosphere broker. You're going to shift the atmospheres and places. Um, there's even missions that's on your life. There's an avenue um, just to even teach women that have been abused, sexual abuse. There's just a lot on you, just a strong spirit of deliverance. There's women that are in bondage that really need your voice. And the Lord says, I will give you a voice. I will give you a platform. Even and I see so many African women um, that have scars on their bodies. And the Lord is just really going to allow you to minister to them. And you have almost like a, what I'll call a campfire anointing. And um, I just really believe that those that gather around a campfire, um, the Lord is going to use you to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit.
and take it for ourselves that the Lord and what He's promised will come to pass in the coming days and months. So Lord, we thank you for that in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You guys just stand with me. I know I can't get to everybody. We, we will get to you um, at some point. We love you. I love you, college students. Thanks for coming. Um, we want to rock that campus this year yeah. for the Lord, Florida Southern, Florida State. Um, we want to help people encounter Jesus in a powerful ways. We want to create a, wor a worship culture where God can speak. Um, I just, I really, really just see what God is going to do. We're looking for a new building every week. We're praying that the Lord would not only place it on people's hearts to sow in financially, but if everybody d does something, whether you're a millionaire and you have a dollar to offer, I just really encourage you, even if you're a, co a college student, to bring something. God is going to bless those. It's a kingdom principle. If you want to receive, you've got to give. So let me just pray for us. and um, Love to see you on Thursday. That's our big service. We clear out the chairs, just really going after the Lord. And um, we got that married couples weekend. I'm, I'm telling you, if you're struggling, even if you're doing good, one of the things that I love to do, and I'll close with this, is I love to bless and encourage people that are doing really well. I'm telling you, we have this mindset of, oh, buy that person's meal that's poor. I can't tell you the amount of meals I've bought for millionaires when I've got nothing. I really believe in sowing, even prophesying into people that are doing financially well. See, because while they're doing well, your word is what can help increase their faith even more and help them to soar even higher. Yeah, yeah. I just want to encourage you, even don't just don't be sowing into places that are struggling, sow into places that are thriving. If, if you walked up to a vegetable field and saw like incredible, I mean, sow into that. So, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your great heart, Lord, your love for your people. You just shed your goodness upon this group of people, Lord. We are expected. Lord, we just put on our armor, Lord, just today. And, Father, I just pray that you would even now begin an awakening. Father, would you awaken the dead dreams, even those in this room, Lord, that are of an older generation. The Father is awakening the dead dreams inside of your heart. And even the young generations, He is planting a dream inside of your heart. So, Father, we just pray for your zephyr winds to flow through this place. Lord, we just ask, Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way this year. Lord, I pray for this Corey Asbury conference, Lord, in September. Lord, that you're going to open up another realm to Lakeland. Lord, there are college students that are going to come that are going to be wrecked for the rest of their life. I just pray for the gift of hunger, expectancy. We want to be kingdom shakers, atmosphere brokers, Lord, and lovers of Jesus. We love you today. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.